you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good evening and welcome to the Kingdom series. I am Anita. I welcome you on tonight as you join on. I welcome you to this Wednesday Night Live, our normal Wednesday Night Live entitled The Kingdom Series where we unpack and we unveil the kingdom of god everything kingdom we are going behind the veil tonight tonight is an awesome powerful profound revelation a profound teaching i'm telling you for somebody tonight after this teaching your life will never be the same and i'm so honored and i'm so grateful to be able to be here tonight to share what the lord has laid on my heart entitled behind the veil it's a reference to the veil that separated the holy of holies from the holy place in the wilderness tabernacle and we're going to be talking about getting into the secret place the secret place with god and we are going to be unveiling the tabernacle we are going to be taking a journey from the you know from the start of the tabernacle straight into the holy of holies we give god all the praise honor and glory hallelujah i'm just gonna put in the comments here i'm gonna put up a picture of the wilderness tabernacle so that you can use it as a point of reference thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah good evening sister natasha how are you so great to see you this evening hallelujah jesus father i give you the praise thank you lord i'm looking for that picture of the tabernacle to post on here jesus hallelujah hallelujah i'm trying to get a picture of the tabernacle up in the comments I don't know why it's not allowing me to mm. oh jesus hallelujah let's see here we go hallelujah yes, jesus oh we give you all the praise lord thank you jesus thank you lord thank you father jesus hallelujah oh my okay it doesn't seem as though i can get the picture of the wilderness tabernacle up for you but it was on my previous post it's today um you can take a look at it you know looking at a visual is really going to give you a proper understanding of the wilderness tabernacle because you know sometimes when you see things in a visual representation it starts to make more sense to you good night sister Sicola. welcome on welcome on we are going on into the holy of holies today we are going into the holy place we are going to take a journey through the wilderness tabernacle and we're going to unveil how we can reach that holy place with the lord so i'm going to without further ado because it's a bit of a lengthy teaching i am going to start with prayer and we are going to get into this amazing profound unveiling of the word of god tonight hallelujah father i give you all the praise i give you all the honor all the glory lord jesus father you are amazing you are awesome father i worship you i join together with everyone tonight on this platform and i worship you we worship you lord we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory father father we thank you for this space tonight lord jesus thank you god that we can come together and learn my god we can eat and drink from your throne room father that we can grow day by day into your likeness and your image lord jesus we thank you for this word holy spirit i pray you will take such control tonight father i pray that everything i speak will be of you lord i thank you god that the world will go forth with anointing and power just to plant the word in the hearts of your children prepare every heart to receive now lord i pray against every obstacle of the enemy to snatch the word out of your children's lives in the name of jesus may it be destroyed now and father i pray you prepare minds to receive you tonight in jesus name hallelujah so we are going to be talking about going behind the veil you know i want to start with this um statement and 
many people might disagree with me, but I'm going to, hi, good night, good night, sister, how are you? I'm going to start with a statement here, and it may, it may be a statement that some people may disagree on, but I'm going to say it anyway. Many believers, many believers, I believe the majority of believers of Jesus Christ have never experienced that secret place of the Lord. Many, many, many have not experienced the secret place of the Lord. I truly believe that the majority of believers are either at the gate of the tabernacle or they are in the outer courts, but they've never gone past this to experience the secret place of God. And the scripture that the Lord gave me to, to, to you know, start off this entire um, revelation and this entire teaching and I was praying and I was saying God give me the teaching for tonight and the Lord sent me to Psalm 27 one of my most favorite Psalms something that I keep near and dear to my heart you know wow looks like what it says today God was telling about the secret place there is a reason I'm telling you not just any reason there is a profound reason why the Lord wants his children in the secret place especially Especially in this time and the season that we are coming into. I'm telling you, let me read the scripture for you and then you're going to understand what I'm saying. Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell. I want us to pay attention to that word, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Watch this now. For in the time of trouble, hallelujah, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And I love this piece of scripture. And I never really thought about it this way before. That God, the, the, sorry, the psalmist David is saying here that in the time of trouble, God would hide him. God would hide him. And we know that, that King David was a warrior, that he was a king of, of, of war, and that he would go into wars and he would fight the enemies. Sometimes they won, sometimes they lost. But what I'm saying is that why is King David talking about God hiding him? And the Lord is saying here, in the time of trouble that is about to come on the earth, my brothers and sisters, the time of trouble that we are about to experience on this earth you need to be hidden in the secret place of god where the enemy cannot touch you if somebody is hearing this word tonight just type amen in the comments i'm telling you we are about you know we are seeing what is going on in the world today we have entered into a time of unprecedented trouble and wars like never before the war in israel is just the start let me tell you the war in israel is just the start of tribulation that we are about to face on this earth not the seven years of tribulation we ha we are not going to be here for that after the rapture that is going to take place but i'm talking about pre-rapture the world is about to experience turmoil and tribulation the likes of which we have never seen before and i'm telling you by the spirit of the living god that you child of god need to find the secret place to be hidden because in the secret place the enemy cannot touch you the enemy cannot touch you he cannot because the secret place is god's holy place it's where god alone dwells not even the angels no one comes into the secret place only god is his place and when you enter the secret place with your lord he is going to hide you when i say you are hidden i do not mean that attacks will not come of course attacks will come the enemy will try everything but what i'm saying is that when you are 
hidden. Oh, glory, hallelujah. My sister is saying there that it's confirmation that what God was speaking to her because the Holy Spirit is in one accord. When he speaks, he speaks across the board. So when I speak this word tonight, it's going to, it's going to, you know, it's going to, it's going to shake something inside of you. It's going to confirm what God is speaking to you and what is God is speaking to every other believer who is able to hear his voice. Please like and share this live. Let somebody hear the word of God tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is able to hide us in his secret place and i love this part he won't just hide you my dear brothers and sisters the word of god says he shall hide you but he shall also set you high upon a rock high upon a rock and it continues to say that your head will be high above your enemies all around you because when you are in a secret place you are above the level of the enemy that he cannot even find you he cannot touch you he cannot he cannot he can't even be on your level because the level of the secret place is such a level. Oh my God, I didn't even come to see this tonight. But as I'm speaking, the Spirit of God is giving me revelation. The level of the secret place is so high above Satan, above the enemy, above principalities and powers that when you, child of God, get to that secret place, you are above the enemy. Just as the word say, we shall mount up with wings of eagles. The eagle does not fly on low plains. The eagle goes up to a height and he soars when he catches the wind. And this is where God wants to take us to that high place hallelujah jesus hallelujah oh let's give god some praise tonight oh my jesus oh my jesus i'm feeling the presence of the lord let us get into this teaching tonight it's a powerful revelation and here the psalmist david is expressing his deep love and longing for being in god's presence and as i said just now let me tell you something many believers and it's a sad truth that many believers are not in that place God wants all of his children in that place. There is not a child of God that he does not want to come into his presence in his secret place. But many of us have not found that place as yet. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you where we get tied up as children of God. Let me tell you where we got, where we got confused. Because the Bible says when Jesus died that the veil was torn in two. The Bible says that when Jesus died, the veil was torn in two, meaning that we all have access, meaning that through the blood of Jesus, now everyone can enter. But I want to say to you today that today the Holy Spirit told me, he said, daughter, access does not cancel process. Let me repeat that, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh my God, I feel the Spirit of God. Access does not cancel out process. And let me tell you, in the old times, in the, in the days of the wilderness, when Moses built the tabernacle of God, there was a process by which the priest could enter the tabernacle. And I want to show you this. The priest had access. The priests were ordained to go in. But even though the priests were ordained to go in, they didn't just run in from the front of the gates. They didn't just run and bypass everything and go straight into the Holy of Holies. Somebody hear me by the Spirit tonight. The priest had a process and so to we children of god there is a process by which our lives must go through to get to that place and this is another revelation that the lord gave me that getting into the secret place it, you know a lot of times that even i used to think i was in that level where i thought getting in the secret place was just a time where i would be in prayer and i would get deep into prayer and after that deep time of prayer i would get into that holy of holy place and yes, that's true. But there is a deeper revelation of the secret place. It's not just, it must move from being an experience that we have in prayer time to a spiritual state where we are in 24-7 in the secret place. And this is the revelation of the word of God where the psalmist David said that we must dwell in the secret place. To dwell means to live, to stay, to remain. 
So when you are dwelling in that place, it means that you have gone in there and you have set up camp and you are remaining inside of there with the Lord. How do we reach there? How do we get there? It's a process. You know, last year, December, the Lord gave me this teaching of the secret place. And even though he gave me it then, it was a different revelation. And he gave it back to me today. It's so strange that God gave me back this, but he gave me another revelation of the secret place. A deeper revelation. Hallelujah. Jesus. So let us get into this revelation of the wilderness tabernacle we are going to journey from the gates of the tabernacle into the secret place we're going to unveil the mysteries of the tabernacle and see how we can gain spiritual access to that most holy place of the lord jesus because as i said you have the blood so you can go in but not everybody gets there because they do not pass through the process let us see what the process is. And I'm telling you that the process, I'm going to tell you up front, my brothers and sisters, children of God, the process is not easy. The process is a hard process. It's a really hard process. And that's why many believers remain at the gates of the tabernacle because that's where it's easy. Because all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are saved from death. You are saved from hell. But unfortunately, the process from there into the Holy of Holies is a long process. And it's a tough process. As Jesus said, the way to heaven is a narrow gate. And very few go in because it's a tough journey. But why is the way to hell? And a lot of people take that road because it's easy. And there are many people who sit at the gate of salvation and they never get to experience the great things that God has in store. As I was sharing the message on Sunday, is that the, in, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that I has not seen, nor air have heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But I'm telling you, it's only Jesus, help me Lord, it's only as you, you reach into that depth with the Lord that you will understand the things that he has for you because it's in the secret place Jesus that you're going to get revelation of the Lord and the things that he has for you you're going to get intimacy with the Lord you're going to get to that deep place with the Lord Jesus it's a process it's a process so let us get into that process tonight as I said, the Bible says that we have access by the blood. Yes, we do. But access does not cancel process. So the first thing, the first requirement to be able to enter into, to get into the tabernacle, because let me tell you this, the wilderness tabernacle was a, a reflection of what the heavenly tabernacle is. The, the, the Lord gave Moses this description to build the wilderness tabernacle because it reflected the heavenly tabernacle it was a reflection a mirror so it reflected what happens in the heavenlies it is a profound mystery and when we understand it we are going to be enlightened like never before so let's talk the the, the wilderness tabernacle as i said i can't put the picture up here but it's on my it's on my it's on my timeline and the wilderness tabernacle was, was a place that only the priest could go. It started with the gates. There were the gates of the tabernacle. For the priest had to enter through one entrance. There was only one entrance through the gates. And the one entrance into the gate is the blood of Jesus. So as long as you are a blood-washed believer, you have access to enter the gates of the tabernacle. That's the first requirement, unless you have the blood, because unless the priest did not come in with the blood, trust me, he could not come in there. He had to come in with the blood. And so too, we are believers who have accepted Jesus Christ. His blood is upon us. We have gotten access. But how do we get past the gates? How do we get into the gates? It says so specifically in Psalm 100 verse 4. It said, enter his gates with thanksgiving, Jesus, and into his courts with praise. 
I'm here to tell you tonight that unless you have praise on your lips, unless you have thanksgiving on your lips, and not just on your lips, in your heart, unless you have a heart filled with praise, you cannot get past the gates of God in the tabernacle. You might think that, you know, God loves you and he's going to draw you in. I'm telling you, the Bible says, Psalm 100 verse for enter his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise and this is why king david had such a relationship with the lord because he said i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continuously be in my mouth unless you have a heart of praise for the lord you cannot get past the gates i'm not talking about salvation here don't get me wrong you are saved once you accept jesus christ and you believe and you receive him you're saved from hell you are uh, you are allowed to enter into the kingdom of God when you die you will you will not go to hell simply put but I'm talking about a walk with the Lord on this side of eternity on earth we can experience the spiritual realm on earth while we are here if we understand process and unless you have thanksgiving a lot of people don't understand about praising God and thanking God it's a requirement you know, the courts of God is the courts of a king. Come on, people of God. The courts of God is the courts of a king. When you enter into the courts of a king, unless you have praise and thanks given on your heart, you can't warm the heart of the king to get in there. We must have a heart of reverence for the Lord. Understand that you are going into the presence of a king, that you are serving a king. So let your lips praise the Lord at all times. Let your lips worship the Lord. Let your lips glorify God. Let your heart always be filled with thanksgiving. You know, yesterday we had our prayer group and one of my sisters in the prayer group, she was saying, she said, I'm not going to give the devil no glory. My mouth is going to praise the Lord. Somebody just give God some thanks tonight as we as we understand how important it is to give thanks come on somebody thank him even in the smallest thing give him thanks because she said something so profound that sister Rachel you know she said and something that really it, it clicked in my heart last night when she said it she said you know People see the negative things that's happening. We see the wars, we see the killings, we see this and we see that. But I want to tell you that she said something that was so profound. She said, if God took his hand off of us, what we are seeing now is a drop in the bucket compared to what will happen. Because the day that the Lord removes his hand from us, it will be utter chaos. And I never really thought about it like that because you know, we, as I say, we see things the way it is. We see the problems. We see the heartache. We see the trials. But we, we don't understand that what God is really protecting us from is of a greater magnitude than we could ever imagine. The day that God takes his hand off of us, we would be in so much peril that we would not be able to bear it. So we have to understand no matter how hard. Trust me, I know it's tough I know it's tough. Some of us go through some kind of battles. We ask ourselves, what is really this Lord? But I'm here to tell you that the Lord's hand is still upon you. That if he took his hand off of it, the battle would be a million times greater. So let's give him thanks for what he's protecting us from. We don't even see it. We don't even see it. We don't understand. So let's give him thanks. So as we enter the gates of the, the, the tabernacle, with praise and thanksgiving, we enter into the courts, the outer courts of the tabernacle. Now, the outer courts of the tabernacle is where the majority of believers are. Let me tell you this. They are still in the outer courts because a lot of people, they, they praise and they worship God and they thank God, but they remain here. And there's a reason why a lot of people remain here. And let me show you the re revelation of why. The first thing that the priest had to do, the first piece of, of, of um, equipment that he would meet is the altar of sacrifice. As they enter the gate, you come and you meet the altar of sacrifice. Now, the altar of sacrifice was where they would slay the animal and they would collect the blood. The altar of sacrifice. 
Now, what does this represent for us? We don't have to kill animals anymore. We don't have to slaughter bulls and goats and lambs. We already have the blood of Jesus. This altar of sacrifice, let me tell you what it is. Here, we are laying down ourselves. Let me tell you something. Ourselves, we are laying our own flesh, our own bodies down as a living sacrifice upon the altar. And this is why many people will never pass this point because this is one of the toughest paths to ever pass. Why? Because this is where we crucify our flesh. This is where we crucify our flesh. Oh, hear me by the Spirit of God. Flesh cannot enter the holy place. Our fleshly ways, our old man, all the old things, the things of our flesh, the loss of our flesh, our emotions, our fleshly desires cannot enter the holy place. Therefore, Therefore, on the altar of sacrifice is where we lay ourselves down as the book of Romans 12, 1, as the Apostle Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. At the altar of sacrifice, it is a process of us killing our flesh. Do you understand why many people never reach, part, reach past this point? Killing your flesh is one of the toughest things that you could ever do as a believer in Christ. As we lay on that altar of sacrifice, it's where we have to repent. It's where we have to let go of unforgiveness, of bitterness, of anger, of anything that will hinder us from going further into the tabernacle. And too many people, they don't want to do this one. This is the hard part. Laying ourselves down, becoming a living sacrifice. Say, God, crucify my flesh. What does it mean to crucify your flesh? It simply means to bring your flesh under subjection. Our fleshly nature is never going to leave us. It's never going to leave us. We don't, it doesn't fall off of us somewhere. When we come to Jesus Christ, the fleshly nature is still there. But what happens is that when we become a believer, we begin the process of growing in the spirit to the point where we subject the flesh. We bring it under subjection. We bring it under control. We bring it under our control that we don't behave the way we used to behave before. All right, because when we come to Jesus, let me tell you something. When you come to God, you come with the same old man that you were before. And you have a new nature. The new nature is the spirit of the living God living inside of you, the Holy Spirit. But guess what? Your old man is still there. And we have to purge out that old man. It's a process. And this is where we lay ourselves down as a living sacrifice. And we, we kill our flesh. Because unless we do that, you cannot move forward in the spirit unless your flesh dies. This process takes time. This process can take time. Please don't expect this process to take a day or two days or three days. Sometimes it might take years. Depending on who you are, depending on how dedicated you are, it's going to take some time. Your flesh has to die. One of the best ways, let me give you a, let me give you a, a secret here tonight. One of the best ways to kill your flesh is fasting. One of the best ways. You know, a lot of people get tired of and think fasting is our praying for God to do things. No. Let me tell you what fasting is. Fasting is killing this flesh and saying, God, I bring myself under your subjection that you could work in me, that you could take me to the potter's shed, that you could mold me and shape me and make me into the vessel that you want me to be. That's what fasting is because what you are doing is you are denying your flesh. So fasting is one of the absolute best ways that you could move uh, uh, from from the gates into the tabernacle and you could lay yourself down as a living sacrifice fast fast and pray don't fast for things people think we're, we're gonna fast for god to give me a house oh i'm gonna fast for god to do this to me and god to do that for me that's not what fasting is for fasting is for us 
It's for us. It's not for God. God is God all by himself. When you fast, you are asking God to work in you, in you first of all. It's about you. It's about processing you. It's about stripping you. It's about moving out selfish desires. It's about searching your heart for God to purify you of your old ways, your old flesh. Because unless you do that, you can't go on to the next stage. So we have to be intentional. I could tell you, well, you know, when I was at this stage, I remember it very clearly. It was so tough. I had to, you know what it is to bring your flesh under subjection? You know what it is when you want to dis desperately do something that you know is not of God and you have to fight the desire and the Holy Spirit helps you. But yes, you have to do some work too. You have to be intentional. You have to say no. One of the hardest things for a new believer in God to do is to let go of the old things. I remember when I first came to the Lord, it was so tough for me to let go of the old things. It took time babes in christ it takes time for them to let go of the old things that's why you would see when people now come to the lord you would see them yes they did they would do things for the lord they would be in church and then the next day you see them outside there doing something else it takes time we have to be intentional and unless you are not unless you are intentional you're going to remain in that place and that's why a lot of people remain in that place of having one foot in the world and one foot in the church because they never crucified their flesh i remember when i now came to the lord i had to struggle with wanting to go and hang out with my friends in the club i still wanted to do it because that was what i knew that was my nature and i had to fight it and i had to ask god to help me he had to help me and he had to help me and, and by his spirit and I had to bring my flesh under subjection. I had to say no to a lot of things. I had to say no to certain conversations. I had to say no to certain people. Certain people had to come out of my life. But it's, 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 a, it's a desire for more of God that is going to help you and give you the strength to, to, to put yourself as a sacrifice upon the altar of God and say, God, kill this flesh. Kill it. Kill it. Can I choose? Hi. Kill the flesh. The fleshly, the killing of the flesh is one of the hardest, hardest, hardest things to do. You know, a friend of mine, she said to me, she said, you know what? You, like, you can liken killing your flesh too. It's like as though you take, you grip onto a part of your flesh and you cut it off with a knife. That's what killing your flesh feels like. It literally feels like that. It's painful. It hurts. It don't, you don't like to give it up. You don't like to give it up. You don't like, you want to be able to go and cuss out the person that did you wrong. Trust me, you want to go and cuss them out. You want to go and tell them off. You want to go and stand up and quarrel. You want to go and argue with them. Trust me, I've been there. But you've got to bring your flesh under subjection. Because flesh cannot go into the holy place. That's right, sis. Flesh don't like correction. I was one rebellious believer. When I first came to the Lord, and people would correct me about things, but I thought I knew everything and I used to rebel. But eventually when I reached that place of being able to subject my flesh, God really corrected me. But the key, the key to this, this stage is hunger. If you have a hunger for God, it will outweigh everything else. If you have a deep hunger and a desire, it will outweigh everything else. As the Bible say, as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. If you are so hungry for the Lord, this will start to become easier and easier because you understand where you want to go. You know where you want to go. So every time you are tempted, listen, every time you're tempted, you're going to remind yourself, no, 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 no. You know what? No, Jesus. I want more of you. So this thing, it does not even make sense. I'm going to leave it there. Kill your flesh. Kill your flesh. Come on, somebody. Kill your flesh. Use the power of the Holy Spirit to kill your flesh. You can't do it on your own. Ask the Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord. Help me to get over this thing. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. Help me. As you pray and you ask him, he will help you. So let's move on. So after the stage of your flesh being killed and your 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 you are growing now you're becoming a little more mature in the lord the next stage if we enter the tabernacle and we are moving forward 
after the altar of sacrifice, you are going to encounter the bronze laver. The bronze laver, you can read about it in Exodus chapter 30, verse 11, and 38, verse 8. Now, the bronze laver is, is like a bowl. It's like a bowl that was made for the priests to wash their hands and feet before they were allowed to go further. What is the revelation of this bronze laver? Now, the bronze laver is two parts, twofold. Now, washing, washing symbolizes cleansing and purification. Washing. It's a symbolic thing of purification and cleansing. The laver symbolizes the word of God, which we are to be washed and purified by. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26 says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, listen, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. So what we need to understand at this stage, the bronze lever, that place that the priest would stop and wash, it is symbolic of us being washed and cleansed and purified. The word of God does that. The word of God does that. And this is why we cannot skip this vital part of the entry requirements of God to get into his presence. The word washes us. It purifies us. It prepares us to go to the other stage. We need to understand something. As I said before, when you come to the Lord, you come with all your baggage. The Lord says, come as you are. He accepts you just as you are. When you come to Jesus Christ, you come just as you are. But he don't leave you as you are. He will do a work in you and he will cleanse you and he will wash you and he will purify you and he will restore you. Because guess what? When we come to God... We are coming with our old mindsets, all the old ways we used to think, all the behaviors we used to have, all the old knowledge that we gained from the world, we have it still in us. So what God needs to do is to purge that out. The Bible says that in 2 Corinthians 3.18, but we all with unveiled face, Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What this scripture is saying is that when we look into the book, when we look into the Bible, I always say this, when you pick up this Bible and you open it and you begin to read it, what you are doing is that you are looking into a spiritual mirror that is going to show you God. And as you look at his reflection, what you are seeing is where you are compared to where he is. And the word says that we are transformed into the same image. What image? The image that we are seeing, the image of God that we are reading here. What is happening is that our image, the old man, is being purged out. All the old nonsense that we gain in the world it's coming out when you read the word it's re resetting your brain it's resetting your mind it's taking out the old and it's purging it out and it's putting in the new and that's what it means to say that the word washes you it washes you you have to be washed the by the, the bronze laver look at this powerful revelation the bronze laver had mirrors inside of it everything god does there is a purpose behind it this god that we serve he's so amazing everything you know you might think that i just put mirrors inside of there it was a heavenly instruction it was a divine instruction given to moses they put mirrors inside of the labor could you picture picture your sink that you wash your face in could you picture that there are it's lined with mirrors if you put the mirrors in there when you bend over to wash your face or you bend over to wash your hand you're gonna see a reflection god put this there oh my jesus hallelujah the spirit of god is so intentional that god told moses to put mirrors in there 
everything that was made in the tabernacle was done with precision of how God intended for it to be because the entire tabernacle is a revelation of Jesus Christ it's a revelation of God it's a revelation of the kingdom and we have to understand so when we look in the labor when we look into the word when we wash the word washes us so after you've killed your flesh and you start to read the word the word starts to wash you out so all the old ways you used to think is coming out of you because you start to see what the bible says and you start to understand that that those strongholds in your mind have to be broken down let me give you an example let me give you an example in the world in the world right now the culture of the world is that women we like women of the world they like to take the role of leadership this might not be something that a lot of people like to hear but it's the word of god and it's reality something that i had to learn and i had to come under subjection i'm showing you an example of how the word washes you out from the old ways of thinking and helps you to understand god's ways of thinking the the worldly way and the way that women of the world are going now especially now we have this woman's uprising and woman's liberation to the point where women want to take up a leadership role in their marriage but if you get into the word of god oh jesus you're gonna understand that the god who made us and he set things in place he declared a decree that the head of the woman is the man your husband is the head not you and a lot of even me i used to take up this i used, I, I always tell people i was so rango tango and you want to lead and you want to bully the husband and you want to bully your husband to tell him do this do that you want him you want to tell him what to do when you need to understand he needs to take up the leadership role so this is an example of what it means that your old ways of thinking have to come out have to come out it have to come out you know the old ways of thinking when you were in the world anytime somebody does something to you you want to take up revenge against them come on somebody you want to take revenge trust me if when i was in the world and somebody did something to me the first thing i want to know i want to plot how i'm going to get back at them listen i want to let them know how what time it is i want to plot for their demise but when you get into the word of god and the bible say pray for your enemies bless them that curse you bless them that spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your father listen jesus the word washes us and it shows us the ways that God wants us to be. So this is the point where this is why children of God, this is why the devil fights us, you know, to read the word. I could tell you, I used to have such a struggle to read God's word. Every time you pick up the Bible, all of a sudden you start to feel sleepy. Jesus. Yeah, Tash, trust me. Oh my goodness. I feel nobody had a hot mouth like me. My God thank you jesus for turning around my life let me tell you something as you pick up this bible to read you start to feel sleepy you start to feel tired all of a sudden things start to go through your head you start to think about something else you start to think well oh my goodness i had to start making lunch oh that this has to be done and the laundry has to get done and that thing and that thing it's the devil he knows listen listen to me your enemy knows that the day you pick up this word and you get the revelation he knows that it's bad business for him because what the word does is that it cleanses you out from all the old filth that satan puts in your mind because when satan puts filth in your mind that's how he controls you do you know that? That's what a stronghold is. A stronghold is a state of mind. A stronghold is something that the enemy uses to control your mind. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right, sis. We, we go to church. We're tired. We sleep. As we leave, my goodness, Sunday reach, you can go to the beach. You can go and do whatever. All of a sudden. Strongholds are where Satan sets up camp in your mind. He binds himself to your mind with lies 
and that's where he controls you so he knows that the day that you pick up the bible and god starts to wash out all those lies that satan put in your head he knows that he does not have any more control over you somebody jesus oh my goodness i feel the spirit of god i feel like i get up from this chair and jump god is so good we need to understand and this is why the this, the devil loves to lie to us. He loves to make us feel that the word is so boring. The word is so, ugh. The word is so frustrating. I don't understand anything in this word. Listen, my, my brothers and sisters, the word of God is your key to your power. When you, when you understand the power that lies in the word of God, you will not put down that Bible take what i'm telling you there's a power inside of that word oh my jesus that is going to fill you with so much power is going to empower you with authority over the enemy like never before so let's get in the word fight that res resist that urge when you start up when you start to read the bible and you start to get sleepy start rebuking say every spirit of of, of slumber and every a oppressive spirit that's coming against me now i rebuke you in the name of jesus rebuke and fight you and get in your word take what i'm telling you the word washes us so let's move on so after we've been washed good night brother Siobhan. after we've been washed by the word what happens next so god i always tell people to picture your vessel like 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 a glass you know a glass an empty glass sorry a full glass picture your vessel as a full glass you come to jesus your glass is full with all the old things of the world so what god has to do he has to empty out those things in order to make room to pour in him his spirit his wisdom his word his knowledge so it's a transaction that's happening you are being emptied out with the old but you are being filled back with the new so when you are washed by the word the next step that takes place is when you go into the tabernacle and we look at the tabernacle. After the bronze laver, what we encounter is two things that are opposite each other. One side, you have the table of showbread and on the other side, you have the golden lampstand. So let's talk about the table of showbread first because it relates to the bronze laver. I tell you, when God started to give me this revelation today, my mind was blown. The table of showbread was a table that they would put the bread that they would bake, 12 loaves of bread, and they would put it on that, on that table. That is holy bread. Only the priests were able to eat that bread on the Sabbath. But the bread has a spiritual significance. Oh, my Jesus what is the significance we know we know exactly what the significance is john 6 35 says jesus said to them hallelujah i am the bread of life he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst this is the stage after we've been washed by the word we now start to eat of the word if somebody is hearing me tonight just say amen. After you have been washed by the word, you now start to eat of the word. You can't eat of the word unless you've made room to digest that word. So what God does is he strips you out of the old. And now at the table of the showbread, oh my Jesus, as the word has washed us out, now the word is going to fill you because now you are going to be eating of the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ, which is the word of God. So after you've been washed, and you start to read the word, you're going to understand that you're going to start to be filled up. You're going to start to be strengthened. When we come to Jesus, as I said, it's a process of unlearning and relearning. The bronze laver washes you. The table of the showbread fills you up. Jesus. The Bible says we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. As you eat of the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ, you are filled. You are starting to get filled. What are you starting to get filled now with? You are getting filled with God's knowledge. You are getting filled with God's wisdom. You are getting filled with understanding. You are getting filled with discernment. This is a level of spiritual maturity that a lot of people do not reach. 
because as I said, the process is tough. Plenty of people don't want to reach there. They just want to get saved and they just want to sit down by the gates there. They want to do what they want to do. They want to hang out in the world, lime, drink, party, do whatever they want to do, come back in, go to church, take communion, and that's how they want to live their life. But the process of getting deeper into the Lord is such a tough process. That's why I say it takes a lot of intention and a lot of hunger for God to get there. So this message might not be for everyone, but I hope, I'm hoping that everyone will take note and will develop a hunger for the Lord. So let's talk about the show bread. Why is the bread, why is the bread representative of the word of God? Because you might say Jesus said he's the bread of life. So if Jesus is the bread of life, where does the word come in here? Well, the Bible say in the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh. And the word dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is the word. You see this Bible here? This Bible is Jesus in a word. This is God. This is Jesus Christ. And he said if we don't eat his flesh, we have no part with him. So my, my brothers and sisters, let us, this is the, the point where we start to really understand. Where we start to get revelation. Where we start to, to, to get filled. This is why the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So this is a stage of maturity where your mind starts to be unveiled to revelations of the spirit. And there's another part to this, and it's attached to the golden lampstand. As I said, the table of the showbread is on one side and on the other side. So pretend you are standing in the middle. You are facing forward. You are facing the Holy of Holies. On one side is the showbread, which is the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. As you eat of his word, you are getting revelation. But how is it connected to the lampstand? Well, the other side where the lampstand is, the lampstand represented the Lord Jesus Christ. It was made of pure gold. It was made of pure gold and it represented Jesus Christ. John 8, 12 says, Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And I want us to understand this revelation. It's so powerful. It is significant. That to note that the only light that is il that illuminated the tabernacle was that of the lampstand. My Jesus, hear me by the Spirit of God. That you could not, you cannot go into the tabernacle with your own light. It doesn't work like that. In the in the wilderness, they didn't light a lamp and go into the tabernacle. The 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 lampstand. God gave them an instruction that the oil was never to run out. It was to burn day and night. Because the lampstand was the only source of light to illuminate the tabernacle. This is significant. Why, Jesus? If you are to access the Lord's pure presence, and if you are to grow in his image and likeness, guess what? You are to surrender your own understanding and be illuminated by the knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ. It is a place of surrender. It is where you lay down your own understanding. You stop thinking about what you think and what you feel and you only let the light of Jesus Christ illuminate you. It is so powerful. This is why the Bible says, do not lean onto your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Don't acknowledge yourself. Don't think what I think and I feel and I say. What does God say? What does the word of God say? What does the spirit of God say? This is what we are, we are talking about here. This is a level that we, are, we have to reach. It's a level of maturity. It's a level of maturity. It takes time to get there. But if you want to get there, God is going to help you to get there. So we must surrender our own thinking. You know, a lot of people read the Bible and they interpret it with their own interpretation. It's true. There are people who are so, so absorbed in their flesh that they will read the word of God and they will get their own interpretation that would make sense to them, that would apply to them. It's like they take the word of God and they twist it around to, to, to conform to the things that they want rather than what it really means so this is what it's talking about here the lampstand is jesus christ and his illumination his knowledge 
his wisdom, the way he lights up our understanding. We have to subject ourselves to that illumination and that one only. So many people have the saying today about being your true self and, and, and owning your own truth. Well, I'm here to tell you, as a believer in Jesus Christ, there is only one truth, and that's Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. That's no other way for us believers in Jesus Christ. There is no other truth. We don't live our own truth. We live Jesus Christ and his truth. Jesus Christ and his truth. And I want us to see something else. There's oil in the lampstand, right? There is oil in the lampstand. The oil in the lampstand signifies the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you tonight that the only way you can receive illumination of the word of the Spirit of God is through the Holy Spirit. So we must always engage the Holy Spirit. As I, I was telling somebody, when you pick up the Bible to read, always pray. Say, Holy Spirit, help me to understand. Help me to get revelation. Help me to understand the truth of the word. The Holy Spirit is the only illumination of the word we cannot get our own interpretation of the word we can't because we will be led us share with our own feelings and emotions that we would think the scripture means something but really and truly it's not that so let the holy spirit illuminate your thinking so after this we move on and i know it's 8 26 but i i you know i'm so in, in, involved and so dedicated to this teaching it's just so powerful after you've passed the stage and you are now at a place where God illuminates your mind, you're getting revelation, your flesh has died at some way back when, you know, you've brought it under subjection, you've been washed by the word, you've eaten the bread of God, he's filled you with new knowledge, now you have revelation because of the, the, the lamp sun has illuminated you, the light of Jesus Christ shines upon you and gives you understanding what happens next? The next thing that you encounter in the tabernacle is the incense altar. Exodus chapter 30, verses 7 and 8. The incense altar, all right? It says, chapter 7 and 8 says, Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tends the lamps. He must burn incense again when he lights the lamps at twilight so that incense will burn regularly before the Lord for generations to come. What is this altar of incense all about? What is incense? What does it represent in the spiritual realm? This altar is the, the last thing that you encounter before you get into the holy of holy places. It was placed before the veil that separated the most holy place from the holy place. The holy place is where you get the brazen altar, sorry, the, the, not the brazen altar, the bronze laver, the showbread, the, the lamp stand, that's the holy place. But after that is the holy of holies. But between the holy of holies and the curtain, sorry, between, between the, the holy of holies and the holy place, there is the altar of incense. Incense is a spiritual representation of intercession and pray intercession and pray i want to read something for you here it's from revelation chapter 8 verse 2 and 3 2 to 4 sorry and it says and i saw the seven angels who stand before god this is the apostle john having a heavenly experience he's in the heavenlies seeing how things are actually going on in the spirit realm so what's happening here? He said, I saw seven angels who stand before God and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had a golden censer. A golden censer is like that thing that they put. Hi, Brother Sat. Good evening. Hallelujah. That, 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 you know, container, that little um, metal thing that they burn the incense in before the Lord. So the angel had a golden censer. This is why I told you everything that is in the spiritual realm it happens in the physical because they have golden censers in heaven. And so too, in the wilderness tabernacle, they had to make censers to light before the, the tabernacle. Right? So there are golden censers in heaven. And the angel had the golden censer. And it says, he came and stood at the altar. He was given much 
incense to offer with the prayers hallelujah of all god's people on the golden altar in front of the throne this is the rep this is the direct representation of what's happening on earth in the tabernacle in your time of prayer in your time of intercession it is a time your your prayer goes up to the lord like incense beautiful jesus the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of god's people went up before god from the angel's hands when you pray when you get into that deep place of prayer and intercession it is going up as incense before the lord now let me tell you something this is not prayer of where you asking for things that happens way back when you now come into the courts, when you now come into your prayer time, that's the time for you to ask for things and to make a request and so forth. But at this stage, at this deep stage of prayer is where you are giving praise. You are worshipping. Your worship goes up as incense before the curtain. The Bible says here that the incense went up before the golden altar. So this is a place where you get into deep prayer you get into deep worship this is a place where you start to pray in the spirit and if you can pray in your tongues this is the time you better loose yourself on your tongues because this is where you just loose yourself in the spirit you 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 give yourself over to the holy spirit he takes full control because he is going to lead you into the presence of the king he's getting ready to take you into the holy of holies that very holy place and this is why we have to pray in the spirit and that's why i said believers of god ask god for that gift ask god for, for, for to be able to speak in tongues because when you are in that place and you start to intercede what you are doing is that the spirit of god is making intercession for you before the holy place you can't do that on your own the spirit of god has to do it for you the holy spirit makes intercession he intercedes and this is where we start to pray in the spirit listen this is a place of deep worship it's a place of reverence it's not a loud place have you ever get, gotten to that time in your prayer that it gets so deep and it gets so intense that you're no longer dancing around and shouting but you're just worshiping in that place of reverence it's a beautiful time and when you get into that deep place it goes up as incense that's why you know we say let our incense rise all the time you know as i said everything that god told moses to do in the tabernacle is representative of what happens in the spirit he said he told aaron and they that they should have incense going up all the time your life should be an incense unto the lord people of god let your life i'm not just talking about your prayer time anymore let's go further let's go deeper let your life be an incense unto the lord of worship the way you live the way you think the way you speak the way you act the way you dress the way you are let it be constant worship unto the lord don't get tied up with these people who do who don't understand spiritual things and they say oh god has set me free to do whatever i want to do don't get tied up with those people your life is a worship and incense unto the lord let your life be so pleasing unto the father that when he looks at you it's like a sweet smelling savor always coming before his presence you know god loves us to live a life that's pleasing to him because it represents who he is it represents his character it represents him it testifies of him that's why the bible says that we are transformed into into that image that image not our own image we are not ourselves anymore we are becoming more and more like jesus and this is why god has a different respect and honor for those who give their life as a living sacrifice to represent him he loves everybody you know he loves everybody but god has a different respect and unrev and honor for you the day that you choose to lay down yourself the day that you choose to lay down your own thing and say i want to be like my father and you start to live your life as a living testament 
testimony. Your witness is your testimony every single day because you don't do the things anymore that bring disgrace to the Lord. You don't do it because your life must reach up to God like incense. It's not just about praying and worshiping anymore. Your entire existence must be a sweet incense before the, the Lord, the living God, because he deserves it. Oh, my Jesus. I just feel like jumping out of this chair and praising the Lord. He's so worthy. He is worthy of that praise. He is worthy. Too many of us are so selfish that we have our mindset on, oh, me, 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 me. What I want, God, what you could do for me. What can you do for me, Lord? I want this bill paid and I want that house and I want this, you know, you asking and asking and asking. That's a selfish, that's a babe in Christ. Babes in Christ do that. But after a while, come on, let's get mature to the point where it's not about what God can do for you anymore. Say, Father, here I am. What can I do for you, Lord? You are my king. I am your servant. I surrender. What, do you, what can I do for you to serve you? Jesus. It's a deep level. And this is why I said at the beginning of this life, the majority of believers will never reach this point because they don't want to lay down their life as a sacrifice. And it's all about them. And it's no longer, they don't care about what God wants. He's like a, he's like a, a, a um, he's like an ATM that they go and they, they make a withdrawal. That's who God is for a lot of believers. And they don't give back to anything to him. He is worthy. He's worthy, Jesus. Oh, glory, hallelujah. He's worthy of your praise. You know, it's just today I was thinking about how, when, you know, when, when we, I was walking through the grocery. No, not today, sorry. Yesterday, I was walking through the grocery and I was picking up my items and I was saying to myself, I have no right to be able to have money to be able to pay for these things because God knows that the level of a sinner that I was and he saved me and he restored me and he took me out of poverty and he's blessed me that I can go into the grocery and pick up what I want I have I am not even worthy of those things it's his grace and it's his mercy and it's his goodness that allowed me to have these things you know what something sometimes we fail to realize that all Jesus had to do for us was to die on that cross he does not have to bless us he does not have to give us a single thing. Everything else is an icing on the cake. Everything else we receive from God is a cherry on top of your cake. You don't deserve to be blessed, but yet he blesses you. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Salvation should have been enough. Just the fact that we don't have to go and perish in hell for the rest of our life should be enough. But we sometimes become so, you know, we, we are like little children crying. The minute we don't get something and God don't do it, you don't answer the prayer. We're going to fly up in God's face and we want to get angry with him. Oh, you're not doing this and you're not doing that, God. You are not entitled to anything. I am not entitled to anything. The only gift that we should have gotten was salvation. But God, oh my Jesus, hallelujah, he's so wonderful, he's so gracious, he's so full of love and mercy that in, in, in spite of it, he, when he saves us, he wants to do more for you. He wants to give you abundant life. He wants to bless you with good things, with health and with strength and with goodness. He wants to bless you. So can you not give him your life? Can you not sacrifice and lay down the things of the world for this king? Can you not lay down all the old garbage, the temporary pleasures of the flesh for the king who has given you his life? Jesus. We are so selfish as human beings sometimes that we forget to realize that we are serving a king. Jesus. We want to pick up the temporary garbage of the world and bring it into our life and give us a moment of pleasure and we forget that the king is waiting for our, for our praise. Our, he's worthy. Jesus, he is worthy. And the day you start to realize how worthy he is, is the day you will get another revelation, another level, another level of, of, of illumination of who you are really serving. Jesus. And after this 
incense altar after your life becomes an incense unto the lord this is the beautiful part that is like you earn something that is even greater oh my jesus the holy of holies after the incense altar is where you step into the holy of holies this is the place in the tabernacle where the ark of the covenant rested the glory of god this is a place a lot of people don't get access to don't feel that just because you're a child of God and he saved you and you accepted Jesus, that you automatically going to get into the holy place. No, my friend, no. Mm -mm. You have some work to do to get there. Because salvation is free, but the presence takes something from you. I said the presence of God is going to take something from you. It's going to take sacrifice and it's going to take hunger and it's going to take dedication and it's going to take a lot out of you. But when you get into that place and you start to experience the very presence and the glory of the living God, oh my Jesus, Jesus. Let me tell you something. You see, when you get into your prayer time and you get into this deep place, you can't even speak anymore because when the presence of God fills the place, you can't even speak because the, 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 the glory is so overwhelming and so strong that all you could do is bow your face to the ground because you are in the presence of the King. I will never forget the first time that I entered that spiritual place in my prayer time. I will never forget it. You know why? I experienced what Isaiah was talking about. I finally understood what Isaiah was talking about when he said he saw the Lord seated on the throne and he said, I am a woe unto me, Jesus. Woe unto me because I'm a man of unclean lips. I will never forget that first time I was in my prayer time. I was in that, that, that prayer time for a while and I was deep into the prayer and I just felt the presence of God walk in the room and I couldn't have done anything else but put my face to the ground and I suddenly became aware of my own filthiness. I became aware of my own humanity. I became aware of how unclean I was as a human being. Because when you are in the presence of the living God, trust me, you're going to start to understand just how much of a filthy rag we are as human beings. Just how filthy. And the only reason that we could come into that presence is because we wear the cloak of Jesus Christ's righteousness, the blood. It's the only reason you can access that place, not your own righteousness. Because I remember how I felt that day. I was like, God, I am so unclean. I can't even stand in your presence, God. I can't even raise my head because I understand who I am in the presence of the King, Jesus. But God is so gracious that he won't leave you on that floor. He is going to do just as he did to Isaiah. As he said, in, as in the book of Isaiah, he said it took the coals. He took the coal from the, from, the, from the throne and he placed it on Isaiah's lips. And he cleansed them and he allowed them to be in his presence. That's what God is going to do for you. He's going to take the coal and he's going to cleanse you. And he's going to allow you to be in his presence because he wants to fellowship with you now. He wants to come and be one with you. This is not a place where flesh is anymore. There is no flesh here. Flesh cannot be in the Holy of Holies. This is spirit and spirit. As the word of God says, deep call it unto deep, 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 deep things of God. This is where the deep, your spirit comes alive in the presence of the one who made you the spirit no spirit your spirit inside of you he knows that this is the one who he came out of the holy one who is standing in front of you your spirit man knows now hey this is where i came from this is where i want to be i want to be one with the lord jesus you know sometime when i get into that place with the lord i tell god father i don't want to come out i don't want to go back I don't want to go back because when you really get into that intimate place with the Lord, trust me, you don't want to come out. You don't want to come out because you understand what it means to finally be complete. And this is why I'm telling you that people who have been dragging for years and they can't get their healing and they can't come overcome 
situation is because you've never been in the Holy of Holies. Because let me tell you something. The day that you enter that holy place, the spirit of the living God is going to heal everything and every broken thing inside of you. There is not going to be anything left, any brokenness and any trauma. The spirit, he's going to become one with you so much that everything else is going to be healed. Everything else. That's the key to your healing. You could go to all the therapy you want, which is good. We should go to therapy. We should. We should. But I'm telling you, the key to your restoration, the key to your healing, the key to your deliverance is the very pure presence of the living God in the secret place. And if you don't cry in this place, something is wrong with you. you probably you, you're not in the secret place. Because when you get into the presence of the Lord, oh my God, you can't help but break down. You will cry. You will weep like a baby in front of the living God. You know, you go to church sometimes and you see some people on their faces weeping in front of God. And there are some people standing up in the back and their hands folded and they're just looking. It's because those people in the back have never been to the secret place. And the people who are on their faces crying... They understand. They're there. They're there. They're there. Oh my God. You can't help but weep in the presence of the living God. I, I am so undone. I have no problem putting my face on any dirty ground anywhere in the world. If the presence of God is there, I'm going to bow before my king and I'm going to weep before my king and I'm going to honor him because he is worthy of it. But this is, let me get to the meat of the message here now. This is where God wants us to dwell. He wants us to remain there because it's going to move. Let me tell you something. The more you grow, the more you grow, the more you spend time in the presence and the more the word grows you and the more the spirit grows you and the more you pray. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to move from just being a time of prayer where you encounter God in a time of prayer. It's going to move from that and it's going to become an everyday lifestyle. Your entire waking moments of your entire life, waking and sleeping, sorry, is going to be you living and staying in that secret place. It's going to be you having a spiritual state. So this is the revelation that God gave me. The secret place, dwelling in the secret place, is not about just getting to that place in the time of prayer, but it's getting to that level of maturity in the spirit. As I was talking about all the things, being on the altar of, the, of sacrifice, let the word wash you. Let the word fill you. Let the word of God, let the, let the lamp of God, the light of God illuminate you. Then get into that place or let your life become a, a living sacrifice. Let your life become worship unto the Lord. That process is going to take you to a place, a spiritual state where you are always in the secret place. You can access God at any time. You don't have to wait to go into the prayer room to access God. Because now you are walking. You are living. You are dwelling. You are staying there. You've been there and you're not coming out. That's what, that's what the secret place is all about. And this is where God wants us. Because as I told you, as the, as the Psalm said, Psalm 27, in the time of trouble, he will hide you in the secret place. Let me give you this revelation. In the Holy of Holies, the devil can't end in there. He might be able to meet you in the outer courts. He might be able to meet you at the gate. Because the, the word of God says that the, when, the, when the courts in heaven were called, that the devil came before the Lord. So when you're in the outer courts and you're in that outer place, the devil can meet you. He can encounter you. He can affect you. He can attack you. And probably you, would, you, would, you, you, you may not be at that level of being covered. But when you get into the secret place, oh my goodness, the devil can't enter the secret place of the Lord. He can't get in there. That's not his place and he can't. If you're in there, this is what I'm trying to say. The enemy can't find you in the secret place. He will try. He will send a tax your way. But he will not be able to take you down. You will be protected. You'll be hidden. And this is where God wants to take us. Because my brothers and sisters, children of the living God, hear me by the Spirit. 2024, you know, God, sh God said to me, 2024, we are going to see a new level of tribulation in this, in this earth. As I said, more wars, even more. 
nation gonna rise against nation we're gonna start to see a lot of tribulation but what happens in the natural is also what happens in the spiritual so that war that we're seeing in the natural guess what it's a lot of it's it's war that's happening in the spirit and the devil is waging war against the children of god that god wants to hide you he don't want you to be fighting 24 7 he wants to hide you and as he hides you, you're going to be in a place of, of joy and peace and goodness. That's what a lot of us miss out on. So let's, let's be deliberate and, and, and in our, you know, our intention of wanting to reach to that level with the Lord. Because when you reach that level of the Lord, there really is no coming back, you know. I don't know anybody who has ever reached that place and probably came back. <laughs> I don't know of anyone, but when you get to that deep place with God, it's like, it's like you're sold out. You're sold out. You ain't going nowhere. Trust me. Amen. 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 This is one of my longer lives. I know it's already 10th nine, but that's okay. That's okay. The word of the Lord is so beautiful. It's such good food. You know, I could sit and listen to the word of God all day. I could sit and listen to, to, to teachings and sermons. This is how we grow. We need to eat and drink of the Lord in order to grow. So with that, I want to close off tonight. But let's pray. Let's pray. Because, you know, when God gives a word, he pours out an anointing to confirm the word. So if you want to get to that place today, if you want to get that hunger for God, if you want to reach that secret place today, we are going to pray. And I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to ask God to release that grace over you and the anointing to draw you into that place. Hallelujah. If this is you, then just bow your head right there. And let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory. I glorify the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. And Lord, even as your children listen right now, and even as they may listen later on, Lord, I thank you that we have received your word. We have received the bread of heaven. We have received, we have eaten of the word. And Father, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you're going to bring the anointing, God, hallelujah, to illuminate this word in us, to plant it in us, to fill us and to keep it in us, Lord, and to take us to new levels with you. So, Father, right now I pray that to everybody who's listening to this prayer right now, under the sound of my voice, let the anointing come upon them now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Let your hunger be filled now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that right now you are stirring up hunger. You are stirring up hunger for you like never before, Jesus. Oh, let the anointing rest upon them now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those, my God, who are struggling with reading your word, Father. I pray right now, my God, that you will break every assignment of the enemy as he gives instructions for your children to read the word. We break it in the name of Jesus. Father, give them a new grace, my God, to be so, so saturated and so hungry for your word, Lord, that they will not want to put it down. Let that grace come upon them now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, for those who are desiring for a deeper walk with you, for those who are desiring for spiritual language, God, and they've asked you, God, let that come upon them now in the name of Jesus. The gift of tongues. Let it come upon your children now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, for those who are hungry to reach your secret place, Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pour out upon them now, God. Pour out your anointing. Spirit of God, breathe upon them. Take them to that place, Lord. Draw them in, God, Jesus, as only you can, Father. Spirit of God, breathe, breathe, breathe. Breathe upon them now. Hallelujah. Draw them in, Father. Draw them in like a magnet into your secret place, Father. Let them find you. I pray that tonight somebody will have an encounter with you in that secret place, in their time of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, God, that you're going to draw your children into yourself. You're going to hide us in your secret place, God. And I thank you as we are hidden, God. I thank you for new revelations, God, new understanding and intimacy with you like never before. 
thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you because you are such a good and a wonderful Father. We bless your name, Jesus. <laughs> I just feel the presence of the Lord so beautiful and rich. I could just sit here and just, uh, just saturate in his presence. Just sit here and just drink in this peace, this joy. He's so full and so rich. Hallelujah. Father, let this peace and this joy come upon your children now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Good night, Sister Jessica. Thank you. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good. Can we just take a minute? Right where you are. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is so rich mm, in this place. Could you take a minute just to give him thanks? Thanksgiving is so important. Could we give him thanks for every good and wonderful thing? For salvation, for mercy, for grace. Father, we thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Lord, there are not enough words to tell you thank you, Jesus. Father, I love you. Jesus, Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. Jesus, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, Jesus, from the depth of my heart, I say thank you. You're so wonderful, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my Jesus. I pray that this word has blessed somebody tonight. I am so full. I'm so grateful. I'm full of his presence. And God is so good. Love you, sis. Love you, Tash. Brother Sat, God bless you. God bless everyone who is listening here tonight. God bless you even as you look on later. And, you know, just share the life, share the life that somebody else can be blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good. So tomorrow on YouTube at 8 p.m., I will be on with my prayer live, Hour of Power, on the YouTube, on my YouTube channel. I'm going to put the link up. Um, tomorrow I'll share the link, but it'll be 8 p.m. on YouTube, Hour of Power. And we're going to pray. We're going to seek the face of the Lord. Whatever it is He wants us to pray for. These, you know, these past couple months we've been doing it and it's been so powerful. Oh my goodness. Um, it was on hold for a couple of weeks because, as I said, you know, I was in that course and it, the timing was clashing. But I thank God that tomorrow we could be back on track with the Hour of Power on YouTube. And I'm so grateful. Oh, good night, Pastor Sima. Welcome to you. So grateful to have you and honored to have you on tonight. So tonight, we are going to close off there. God is so amazing. He's so good. And I pray that you will find that secret place and that you will have the most amazing experience with your God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So with that, I'm going to close off. Take care. Love you all. Be blessed.